if kids are coming up and they want to be a catcher, what are a couple things they need to know? Well, I, th I think the first thing is you have to get a glove that's comfortable to your hand. A lot of people think that you want a big, big glove. I disagree. I think it needs to be an extension of your hand and you have to have good control of it. So I always used a smaller glove because I felt like it was easier to catch and I also felt like when you had to make that throw to second, the exchange was easier. When you're behind the plate and you see the field from that angle, how much do you enjoy seeing things from that angle? Well, I love it. I, you know, I've always felt as a catcher, you're an extension of the manager, what he wants done. You have to understand what you have in your bullpen, and you're an extension of the pitching coach. You have to carry out that plan. So to me, being able to see the whole field, I always tell catchers, you have to be the example. You're the one that really has to play the hardest because you're the one that everyone sees. So if you're playing hard, I think you set a good example. What makes a good catcher? Um, there's a lot of things. I, I think receiving is extremely important. I think blocking and throwing. But I think the most important thing is being able to execute a game plan with your pitcher. Sometimes you know what the right pitch is, but that pitcher can't make that pitch. So you've got to figure out a different way to get that hitter out. So understanding their hitters and understanding your pitchers are the most important thing. And I would have to imagine on any given day that game plan can change throughout the course of the game depending on what your guy is able to throw and, and who's coming into the batter's box if there's a substitution, a pinch hitter. Yeah, you might have a game plan where, you know, let's say a certain hitter doesn't hit change-ups. Well, if that's not the strength of your pitcher, you got to figure out something totally different. Or let's just say that a strength of your pitcher is a slider, but the guy's a good slider hitter. So, yeah, you're going to have to use your slider, but you might have to expand a little bit more with it. You have to understand really where a hitter's weaknesses are so you get the most out of your pitcher. Let's talk positioning behind the plate. Well, you always want to give yourself, you always want to be as close to the hitter as possible. And kind of a rule of thumb was you could almost touch their back knee with your glove. Because if you get too far away, you take too many strikes away because the ball's either going to go probably dip below the zone. So you always try to get that. You want to be in a comfortable stance. And I've always felt that if you duck your feet, that your hips open up and it's easier to squat. So, and in given signs, you have to, you know, you have to protect your signs. So your knees are going to be close together. You're going to put your hand on the outside of your, of, of this knee, your, your glove, to protect it from the third base coach. Kind of turn a little bit from the first base coach, and you're going to give a sign. Now you have sometimes guys like Jacoby Ellsbury right. who have a late swing. So you have to incorporate that as well. I would think you say you want to be close, but you don't want to be too close. Right, and you have to know the hitter. So we're playing Oakland uh, during the course of these th three days, and Adam Rosales is someone that gets catchers interference. So you will see me from the bench telling my catchers, "Screw back a little bit, screw back a little bit," because you don't want to give up a free base runner. Do you miss being back here at all? I don't. I I, I really don't. I don't miss trying to find a way to sleep every night that I'm comfortable because my back hurt or my knees hurt but you know the thinking I miss but I can do that over there so I and all these foul tips I see these guys take I don't miss them it has to be tough just on your body the amount of physical strain it takes being in that position for nine innings it does your legs get worn out and and that's one of the reasons that I've encouraged our catchers when there's nobody on or there's less than two strikes, if you can catch from your knees, catch from your knees. Save your legs because it's important in your offense, it's important in blocking, it's important in the explosive uh, movement you have to make when you throw a base runner out. So whatever energy you can save or whatever strength you can save during the course of a day, a week, a month, a season, save it. Was there ever a point in time where you said to yourself, what am I doing back here? <laughs> Let's try another position. That was when I was 13. <laughs> when I was 12, I caught for the first time and I tried to go back to the infield when I was 13 and they wouldn't <laughs> let me. So, But from then on, I really loved it because you're, you're so involved. And there was a point in double A where there was only nine healthy players and the other catcher was a bigger fella. So they put me in right field until our right fielder got back. And it was the most boring position I'd ever played. I mean, there's no action. So once you get used to all this action and thinking, it's hard to change. Because that's your mindset when you go down to spring training. Is that something that you kind of zero in on? What do our young catchers look like? Who do we have in the oh, minors? Oh, yeah. I mean, you want to see you know, how these guys handle staff, how they receive, how they throw. Do they make pitches look like strikes? Um, it's really important, and I pay attention to those guys because it is a hard position, and you also want to protect them a little bit during spring training because they're going to get physically beat up. Who is the catcher you looked up to when you were coming up through the system or even when you were younger when you I said, was, I want to be that guy? When I was a little boy, originally it was Johnny Bench, and then I got a chance to meet Carlton Fisk and train with him, and he was the guy that I really looked up to. And 
Just his longevity was amazing and the great player that he was. Okay, Meredith, it's your turn. I'm going to put you in the stance. I'm going to give you the glove. It's a new glove, so it's clean, so there's not pine tar in it, so it's, you know, not something you're going to say, ooh, when you're done here. So. Well, if just by touching Gary Sanchez's yeah. glove, that means I'm a little bit better. Yeah. I feel good about it, but this is a terrible idea, I so, might add. Okay, so you're going to so. just, just a comfortable position, and, and if you were to go into a squat, that's all you do. So I'm down here? That's that's it. So you're going to want to put that hand behind you. Oh, yeah. So don't you don't hit. get beat up. That's right. And if you can duck your feet out and actually sit on your heels more, you'll feel it's much more comfortable. There you go. This doesn't look right. No, you're, you're right. Your target's a little high. That's probably a target on the Aaron Judge. you got to think about it. down lower. Knee high. There you go. And, and you can basically touch my knee now. You can, there you and, that, and you're in the right position. All right, Joe. So I'm down here. What happens when I know I have somebody on first base like a Jacoby Ellsbury, a Brett Gardner, that might go? So I put you in the comfortable stance with yeah. nobody on. I'm going to get up a little bit more, and I'm going to get to where I'm parallel so I can move quicker. So yeah. you, as you can see, you, you, you got to spread your feet so you can get comfortable. And you got to duck them so you, your hips open gotcha. up. Gotcha. All right? And then you're just going to kind of sit, and you're ready. And I always put my hand, my thumb inside my fist. Huh. So behind my glove. So if there was a foul tip, I got hit here, not here. Because that, really, that would really do a number on your nails. I was going to say, the manicure would be gone. <laughs> they would be red. It would just be a different red than you have today. I got to tell you, it is not a comfortable stance, nor did I think it would be. But you get used to it, you right? You get used to it. And, and I think certain bodies are, are prone to do it easier. I actually think... Shorter catchers have an easier job. You know, I mean, there's the, the, the Carlos Ruiz, the Pudge Rodriguez. These are guys, you know, um, Vasquez in Boston. The shorter guys, I think it's, it's easier. The big catchers, there's a lot of wear and tear. And I was around some big... Sandy Almar was a great catcher, um, junior. But he was a big guy. Benito Santiago, he was taller, but he was thin. A great catcher as well. But, you know, I think sometimes you're better off being short like me. So six feet tall, eight surgeries deep. And you're ankle not, surgery? You're not bed no, me, right? <laughs> no, because the, the problem is you probably don't have the flexibility in your ankle anymore to do what you would have to do as a catcher. All right, well, I'll stick with what I'm doing right now. Then I don't think I'm going to take safer, a change the over there. Exactly.